Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. I am Craig. Well, if you've been watching the channel, you know I was sailing around Lake Ontario. I'm still in the process of producing those videos. They're still coming out. Life kind of got in the way, so things have gotten a little slower than I expected. But I wanted to say that while I was out there for about five and a half weeks, I was thoroughly testing all of these all power things. Uh, they did send them to me to test. They sent me a 400 watt panel which I'll just tell you right now is way too big for my boat, so I could only really test it here at home. And then two other solar panels that look almost identical. We got a 100 watt panel, and then behind it we got a 200 watt panel. They are the exact same dimensions, except for the 200 watt panel has uh, four panels instead of two, so it's just thicker. Uh, and then this R600, which is gonna be the crux of this video, um, because this is new to me. I already have done a review of the S2000. This is the S2000 Pro. It's just a little beefier, a little bit more uh, inverter power. It also has a 30 amp out, but I'm not really gonna spend a lot of time talking about that today because if you wanna see the S2000 review, I've already done uh, that. The S2000 was the one I left on the boat. It's still on the boat right now. It is my inverter everything thing. It does the job. Now, if you watch my reviews, you know I always do the pros and the cons of every product. I don't think there's any value in these videos if all I'm gonna do is receive products from companies and then always just say they're wonderful, no matter what. If you know me, you know <laughs> no such thing as a perfect product. And I'll find cons in almost everything. Sometimes they're nitpicky cons. And with the R600, I'll tell you right now, the cons I found were very small and almost insignificant. Some might say nitpicky, but I'm just saying some of the things that I would improve on this, uh, because I've reviewed a lot of other solar generators and um, some have features that this one doesn't. Some, this one has a lot of features that other ones don't, and we'll get into all of that. Let's leave the solar panels till the end. We're gonna talk about the R600. Okay, let's just go over some of the specs and features. I'm just gonna read it right off their website. I will put it on the screen so you can read it as well. Just keep in mind the website I'm showing you is actually the Canadian All Powers website. So those prices you see, although they're having a wicked sale on things right now, are in Canadian dollars, not US dollars. I do have a code that will be in the video description that supposedly will give you a bigger discount than what's showing on their website. So if you are interested after seeing all this, use the code and uh, hopefully it helps you save some money. So the specs of the R600, you get the 600 in its name from the fact that it's a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. I have put an oscilloscope on it. It is pure sine wave. It's not, uh, there's no noise in it. It has a surge capacity of 1200 watts. Surge capacity just means for things like a power tool or something that starts, it's a motor and it has to go from zero to up to whatever its speed is. There is a surge in power at the beginning. And in that case, that 1200 watts just there for a short burst, it can go higher than 600 without shorting it out. So that's just a nice to know thing, but the reality is 600 watts is it's consistent, it can handle kind of level. And I have tested it and it can definitely handle that, probably a little bit more, but I'm not one of those guys that likes to torture test these things and see how far it can go before it breaks because I really love this thing and I wanna use it in the way that I've been using it. Actually, just so you know, on my boat, since I had both of these, you might be wondering why do I need both? In fact, I had three. I had two of these size and, and then this one. This is perfect for a cockpit. So if you're running uh, your iPad, your phones, things for nav Navionics and stuff on your boat, um, this is something you just put in the table in your cockpit and just leave it there. And anytime anybody needs power in the cockpit, this is what you have. This is a little bigger, so it's meant for bigger draws. We'll get into that in the future, but this is a little harder to lug around from spot to spot. This is, let me just do it. I can do it right now with my one finger, one thumb. Very uh, reasonably light um, because it doesn't have a massive battery. So we'll get into that now. 299 watt hour battery, lithium iron phosphate, 3,500 cycles to 80%. So all that just means is it's not a lithium ion battery, it's a lithium iron phosphate. That's beneficial because lithium iron phosphate does not have that risk of catching fire. And it has 3,500 cycles to 80% as opposed to let's say four or 500 cycles in a lithium ion battery. So keep that in mind. For example, this little one that I have, this is the very first one I ever got. I bought it myself from Ninja Bat. It's lithium ion. So it's a little bit uh, bigger battery for the same size, but it's a worse technology battery. I always suggest lithium iron phosphate for the reason of the 3,500 cycles to 80%, which means after 3,500 cycles, you will still have 80% of its lifespan capacity left. So it's not a brick after that. It's just 
they want to tell you how far you can go before you're going to start noticing a little bit of degradation in the uh, longevity or the capacity of your battery. Now I did test that capacity with a AC meter and a DC out meter and it does get around 80%, which is very comparable to most other things that are claim lithium iron phosphate battery capacity. You're never going to get 100%. There's always going to be some phantom draw. Whenever you have this thing turned on and it's monitoring, it's got a little software built into this. It's monitoring the hertz and then making sure everything's going perfectly. That just draws power on its own. The inverter itself that runs the 600 watt sine inverter uses power just to be on, even if you have nothing plugged in. So if you turn on the button here to turn on AC, just having that on without anything plugged in is actually consuming some power. So the reality is whatever they say this capacity of the battery is, good rule of thumb is uh, you should be getting about 80% of that, sometimes more, some products a little bit less, but usually around 80%. Now for a battery that only has 299 watt hours, it's meant for, for portability. This is something you would take camping with you if you're tent camping or uh, on a boat where you have limited space, or maybe you don't need a super big inverter. Um, this is this is what you take with you. RVs, places like that where you have more space, more weight capacity, you might go with something a little bigger just in case. But keep in mind, the bigger the battery, the harder it is to charge to full unless you get more and more solar. So if you wanted to go light, you could go this with just the 100 watt I just showed you a second ago, you'd be fine. 200 watt, even better. I even tested it with the 400 watt to see if it would actually charge, and it does, even though the specs say that it will charge a max of 300 watts of solar. I plugged it into the 400 watt, it still worked. And it's all because it's it's rated for, let me say input here. It says on the side where the uh, AC input is, it says 12 to 60 volts. That's how much volts it'll, it'll do. So all you need to do is look at your solar panels open circuit voltage, and as long as it's less than 60 volts, you should be good to go. Now what it's saying is the MPPT controller in here should max out at 300 watts. So on a, you're not, again, never gonna get full capacity. On a 400 watt panel, you're never gonna get, or very rarely, if ever gonna get the full 400 watts, you're probably gonna get closer to 300 on a cloudy day, overcast day, non-perfect day, or if the angle isn't perfectly perpendicular to the sun's angle, you're not gonna get 100% of its capacity. So if you plug it into a 400 watt panel that's bringing in 300 watts, you're gonna get the full capacity of this MPPT controller. So you can overclock it or over, over solar it by plugging it into a bigger panel as long as the panel's open circuit voltage is less than 60 volts. So I did do it and it does work. So since I already have this one, if I wanted to charge this thing in probably an hour, I could plug it into a uh, 400 watt panel and bring in 300 watts. If I plugged it into a 200 watt panel using that same sort of formula, you're not gonna get the full 200, watt 200 watts, maybe you get 160, well then it's gonna give you 160, right? It's not gonna dial it down because you're not above its, its MPPT uh, panel input uh, capacity. Now, I should mention that I've said solar generators, that's sort of what I call them. Some people call them uh, portable power stations. And I have had people in the comments say, why do you call it a solar generator? It doesn't generate power. <laughs> you're thinking of the gas generators, like the old Yamaha and Honda generators where you fire it up and the gas engine turns over um, whatever and creates power. Um, <clears throat> This is called a solar generator because it's got an MPPT controller in here that will take your solar panel, plug it directly in here. It efficiently compensates for volts and amps to maximize the power going in here and storing it in the lithium iron bank. So it just got that acronym of solar generator. If that name bugs you because it's not really generating power, it's just taking in power and converting it into a battery, uh, then Call it a portable power station then, because that's what it does after it's taken the solar in, it just stores it and then converts it with that sine wave inverter into uh, AC if you need AC or DC if you need DC. And I'll get to the ports in a second. There are 10 ports on this thing, which is a lot for a small generator like this. You got two uh, 110 or 120 volts, sorry, six, 600 watts maximum out. That's between the two. Uh, you've got two USB-A, and here's the part I really like, two USB-C. You might go, okay, why is that so good? Well, let me just look at one of the competitors. That almost looks identical. Um, this is the uh, Blue Eddy EB3A. Do you notice two USB-A and only one USB-C? 
which is a bit of a bugaboo for me. I don't like that. The future is USB-C. Buy a brand new phone, buy a brand new, well, iPad, buy a brand, brand new anything, and most everything comes with a USB-C cord. And not a USB-A to USB-C, but a USB-C to USB-C. Most of the new wall chargers now come with a USB-C out, not USB-A. So in five years, USB-A may, may be, go the way of a VHS tape once DVDs can come out. You just won't see them around much anymore. So this is future proofing a bit. You'll still have your legacy USB-A, but you'll also have two USB-C, and those can go out at 100 watts. Now, what uses 100 watts? Not too many things. And the only thing I can think of is a MacBook Pro. My iPad, my 12.9 inch iPad, maxes out at 30 watts. No phones are gonna use more than probably 15, 20, 30 at the absolute max. I don't even know if any phones actually use 30 watts. So when it says 100 watts, will you really use 100 watts? Unless you're plugging it into a large laptop that is pretty low in power and is really willing to suck in the, the watts, you're probably not, not gonna ever need 100 watts, but it's there in case. You then have two 10 amp, 12 volt, five millimeter barrel ports. And then the old tried and true, I call it cigarette adapter, 12 volt, again, 10 amp out. And then on top, <clears throat> you have um, the wireless charging. So you can just stick your phone on top of here and voila, it starts charging without any cord at all. It's actually kind of hand handy, this handles here, because if it's down, if your phone's monstrously big, um, like I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it takes up so much space, it doesn't fit under this handle. But my father-in-law was on the boat with us and it was the boat was rocking and rolling and he needed to charge his phone. <clears throat> I put it on here, then I stuck the handle up and his phone perfectly sit with inside the handle so that the phone didn't slide around while we were bouncing through the waves. And the last thing that is really unique to this that any other small, in it, relatively inexpensive solar generator does not offer you is UPS, an uninterrupted power source. Which means if you plug this into uh, shore power, and you work from home, you can then plug in your computer if you are a work from home person who just cannot have your computer go down at all. Let's say you're in the middle of some massive project and if power goes out, you might lose some data. You plug your computer into this and if the uh, normal power grid goes down during a storm or whatever, this thing will keep it up and running. It, I think it's like some small amount, 10 milliseconds or something between when the land power would go out, when this would figure out the power is going out and start powering it through this. It's actually pass through charging. So you can charge this with shore power and then also um, plug things into it and it will pass through the charging. So if you lose land power, it, you won't even realize you did unless your lights go out or something. Okay, next we're gonna talk about why would you get something like this versus something like this? I mean, if you're on a limited budget, you might be like, oh, I definitely could afford this. Ah, could I afford this? And if I had this, would I also need this? The answer is if you have this, you probably don't also need this because it's, this is much bigger. It has more ports, uh, it has bigger battery capacity, more solar potential input, all that. Problem is, it costs a lot more. Um, so cost is one reason. If you wanna keep it economical, more economical, you just get what you need. You don't get, what if I what if I need something bigger? The times you'd need something bigger. For me on a boat, you might be the same if you're in an RV. If you're running high draw things, like on our boat, we have kettles, toasters, microwave oven, bunch of things that we can plug into here and use it just like we're on land or plugged into shore power. So this is why we use this for our grunt work, the big stuff, <laughs> happy wife, happy life, right? So some, my wife, when she's had a shower, likes to blow dry her hair. Uh, even if she can use the blow dryer on low heat, she doesn't need the high heat, but this thing can handle the high heat. But um, you can plug it into this, you cannot plug it into this. If you go above 600 watts, this thing will go a little bit and then it'll give you the over current warning and it'll stop uh, producing output through the AC port. And then the only way I found, because the power button here, holding it doesn't seem to stop, reset it. You have, to, um, you have to unplug it. If it's plugged into anything, you have to unplug the shore power. Uh, I've, tr I've tried that. So I had it plugged in and then I tried to charge this from this just to see what would happen. And it did start charging it for about 10 seconds and, uh, and then it, it gave me that error and I was pressing the power button trying to get it to reset, would not reset until I unplugged the power at the back, let it sit for a few seconds, then hit the power button and it shut off and then I shut it back on and everything was reset. But 
if you need big draw items, again, microwaves, to electric kettles, um, a toaster, um, yeah, go big, because this isn't gonna do it for you. If you don't, if you're a camper and all you want is for your laptop, your iPad, your iPhone, your whatever, you know what I mean? Little stuff that isn't gonna be above 600 watts, this thing is awesome. Here's why, I uh, probably should wait for the pros and cons, but long and short, this is an R series, R600. They've just come out with the R2500 and they said they might send me one to review and I really hope they do because I absolutely love this thing from the UI sense. Um, the buttons work just by touching them. This old S series is so wonky with the buttons. If you saw that last review, I, I sent them an email like, what were you doing with these buttons? So if you want to, um, let me just turn it off. Okay, and you've got to press and hold everything to stop it from doing anything, and it takes a while. See how long I had to hold it there? So now that it's off, if I want to wake it up, pressing the button doesn't do anything. You have to press and hold. And then this is the AC on. You think I would be able to just press it and it would turn on? No. You've got to press it and then press and hold it. And then it comes on. And then at first the fan comes on, even though you don't have anything plugged in. And then the fan goes off. So that's always something that I've thought was a little weird. So the UI on this is just a little confusing. Like if, if you have a friend on your boat and you're like, hey, you mind just turning my AC on my, uh, on my solar generator there? I need to, I need to run the toaster. You're, they're never gonna figure that out. <laughs> you're gonna have to say, first you have to press and hold the power button. Then you have to press and then press and hold the AC button. It makes no sense at all. So I told them that. And like I said, I, I'm all about the pros and the cons, just because you send me something, not gonna, I'm not gonna gush about how great it is if there's definitely areas of improvement. So this is in the S series, this is the R series. The R series has gotten rid of all of that. So now, when you press a button, that's off. Press a button, that's on. Press the button, that's on. No pressing, no holding, no doing crazy stuff. Um, so I love this thing. Love it. Perfect product for the size. <laughs> I'll find a few flaws. Again, I have to find some flaws, but the R2500 will be bigger than this in terms of capacity. Uh, this is a 2200, I believe, maybe 2400, 2200 watt um, sine wave inverter, 1500 watt hour battery bank. The R2500, this but larger, um, same layout, it looks exactly, I'll put it on the screen, same look, same layout, same, probably same, well, the buttons look the same, so I'm sure it's gonna work the same. Um, but just bigger, with actually bigger sine wave inverter, 2,500 watts, and a bigger battery bank. So it seems like it's the best of all worlds. And the number one thing is, buttons actually work as buttons. So hopefully I've summarized. This is perfect for my needs on the boat where I want something in the cockpit and I don't wanna lug this out from where we usually keep it, which is near my bed in my master cabin because that's where my house bank batteries are. You're gonna say, what do you mean by all that? Okay, let's just go through it quickly because I'd said this once before about how you can get uh, additional capacity cheaply on your solar generator. I said you can plug this in to your house bank battery and it adds capacity almost as if you're plugged into solar. And I think I confused the crap out of people, so I'm gonna do it right now. So, well, let's just use the big one for now. This is the way it is on my boat. If I plug this in, picture this is my house bank battery on my boat. In fact, I have, this is a 100 amp hour battery. I have two 200 watt hour batteries in parallel. So I have 400 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This is just a smaller version of it to show you for this demonstration purposes. You plug your, uh, your alligator clips on this and then you have something with an XT60, which is this little one. Both of these use an XT60 for charging purposes. Plug it in here and you fool this thing into thinking you're plugged into solar panels. Now this is 100 watt hour, so it'll get you about 100 watts. Let me just see what it goes up to. There you go, it gets you about 110 watts. If you wanted something bigger than 100 watts, let me show you what I have next. Okay, here I have two 100 amp hour batteries in, in series. Now here's where an, a bigger MPPT controller from this one is preferential to this one. Had I plugged that 100 uh, amp hour battery into this, you would have got about 110 watts just like this did. So now since it's in series, this is a 24 volt battery bank. If I plug it into the little one, there you go, it's charging. And I've done this before, I know in a second, this is gonna get to about 110 watts. 
which is exactly the same as if you plugged it into a 12 volt battery. There we are, 100 watts. Don't ask me why it doesn't give you more. You might say, well, why would it give you more? It's double the voltage. The MPPT controller should convert that to the maximum amount of solar. It does not. For some reason with this, it just gives me 100 watts, which is fine because this is only a 299 watt hour battery. So 100 watts is plenty. It'll charge you in about three hours. But let's plug it into the bigger one. And you're gonna see this much bigger MPPT controller get this up to somewhere around 500 watts. There we are, 471, 483. So it gets just about 500 watts. It fluctuates up and down a bit, I noticed that. I guess the MPPT controller keeps trying to, it's that balance between amps and volts and whatnot. And you can hear the fan. When you're putting in almost 500 watts, the fan on this thing is going to be audible. So if you are putting this beside your bed, plugged into 24 volt batteries, you gotta live with the fact there is going to be fan noise. But anyways, all this just to be said, because I've mentioned this before in previous videos about if you have batteries, um, you can just add capacity. If you plug this into your house bank of your boat, so in my case, my house bank is charged by glass solar panels above my Dodger. So I, the house bank's always being charged. And whenever this gets low, because my wife's used it for the microwave, the kettle, whatever, and it gets low, I just plug it into my house bank battery. So I have a cord like this coming out of my house bank battery. Let me just unplug that so that fan stops. So picture this is my house bank battery. I have this coming out of it. It's not quite long enough. So all I do is I bought on Amazon a little XT60 uh, extension cable to make it a little longer. And then I have this come out from under my bed and I leave this beside my bed. I just plug it in anytime I look down and it's low. I don't leave it plugged in because again, that fan noise. And also why constantly keep your battery at 100% charge all the time. I plug it in, when it gets near 100%, I unplug it, it's right beside my bed. And this sort of just stays by my floor of my bed and if my wife needs to run anything like the microwave, kettle, toaster, hair dryer, she generally, instead of lifting this and bringing it into the other room, she just runs an extension cord. <laughs> now, if you didn't want the extension cord thing, that's what this 30 amp output would be good for. So you plug this in as if you plugged your boat into shore power and then all your outlets in your boat work so you can just plug into whichever outlet is closer. But in our case, instead of running a shore power cord to this, just easier to run an extension cord from my cabin floor to the kitchen where she plugs in all sorts of things. So getting back to the pros of the R600, I love the screen. With the caveat, I love the screen inside for its brightness. It looks plenty bright inside. As Soon as you bring it out into the sun though, that'll go in my con air. It's a little hard to read, especially if you're not looking directly at the screen. If you're looking at it from an angle, like if you're standing above it and it's on the ground and you're looking down, you, you really can't see it. But we'll get to that in a second. I also love that for a little, I've never seen it on a little solar generator, it tells you your watts in simultaneously to your watts out, which is important because a lot of them, that Blue Eddy, this Ninja Bet, any of the smaller ones, I find that always, actually even this big one does that. It only shows you watts in if there isn't any watts out going on. So if you're plugged into solar, it'll tell you you're bringing in 300 watts of solar. And as soon as you plug in anything into the AC or DC, it reverts to how many watts out. And, it, and there's no way to see how many watts are coming in, which is weird because you think on something this size, you could put both since you can put both on this one. Again, the pro I kind of already touched on, it'll accept a lot of solar for the size of this battery. 299 watt hour battery, it accepts 300 watts of solar. So you can charge this thing in an hour from solar panels, which is really, really, really quick. Uh, it's quiet. I love the fact that this thing has multi-speed fan. I found this older S-series, it's like the fan is, every time you turn on the inverter, even if you're just putting a small draw on it, you can hear the fan. This thing, silent unless you start putting a, a fairly, you know, noticeable draw on it. And granted, it only can go to a max 600. But if you put in a couple hundred watt draw on it, a fan will come on slow. And then if you really max it out towards 600, the fan will slowly keep ramping up higher and higher until it's at max. As soon as you take the draw off, nothing, no sound at all. So uh, I, I love that it's silent, especially if this is something that's gonna be near where you sleep, um, then you probably are gonna appreciate the fact that there's, it's very quiet. And it definitely feels like a step in the right direction over the S series, which again, the UI on the S series is not great. Now, granted, I used it on my boat all summer, so it's not like I disliked the product, I just disliked the UI. One other thing it does have too, is it has an app 
which I almost never use. It's there if you're the type of person who likes to monitor your battery bank from your phone app. And that's pretty much all it can do is it can monitor what state of charge you're in. And re remotely from the app, you can turn on the things that have a button. Like you can turn on AC, you can turn on DC. I think you can even turn on the light, which is something I didn't mention. There is a light. I've never used a light like this. This would be like in lieu of a flashlight. I'm like, but who's gonna walk around with their solar generator as a flashlight? This is for uh, any of the solar generator companies out there. If you're gonna put a light in it, Make it like a dome light. Make it something like this. That's just something you might leave in your tent. And it's just a kind of an ambient dome light. Um, not a flashlight. This is not gonna, you're not gonna walk down a path with this and flash it because it's kind of like a, it's kind of a muted light. It's not very, gonna go very far. Oh, it even gets brighter. Oh, it even gets brighter. Oh, there it is. Again, lights on solar generators don't seem like they serve a purpose because again, nobody's gonna use it as a flashlight. Create a dome light somewhere and, and maybe I could see the value in it. Okay, so let's get into the cons. Again, I'm gonna preface this, I love this product. So don't take this as me saying it's a bad product. They are very nitpicky. Number one thing, and I've noticed this, actually took it right off. This solar generator over here from Afri had the same thing, a plastic door that just is on a lever, thin plastic, it's gonna snap off. Same thing here. The old S series never put any plastic doors, but look at this. This is where you plug it in if you're plug in, plugging in to charge it, and this is where your solar input is there. And this is this little flimsy plastic door, which you know is gonna get snapped off. You have a cord, you forget you're plugged in, you go to walk away and the cord yanks up on this door and it's gonna snap it off. Now with this one, my, my buddy's like, you know, you probably could take that off. And all he did was, put his thumb in the middle and, and push down to kind of bend the plastic and then the little prongs that stick out the side were in enough that we were able to just pull the door off without breaking it. I just think if you're gonna have ports on the side and you wanna protect it from rain or dust, don't put a flimsy plastic door on it. Just do like this, put little rubber doors that you can just push on and seal it from dust or rain or whatever. That's what they did on the front. Why wouldn't they just make a rubber door for the side? So again, I know, nitpicky, but just ergonomically, one of the things that made me go, hmm, why would you do that? You didn't do it on your old S-series or older S-series. So uh, that seemed weird. Again, I touched on it already. I wish the screen was either brighter at outside, higher knit, or come out with a better technology. Um, for example, going back to my old Ninja Bat, this is the old style, like LED little old school stuff. And, um, you can see this from any angle, and you can see it outside. This is some sort of, it's not touch screen, it's just a screen of some sort with one area that's slightly different color. The, the percent of charge is blue and everything else is white. It looks sufficiently bright inside. As soon as you get outside, and I'll show you a clip, you can barely see it, especially since it doesn't seem to have good viewing angles. If you're looking at it from any angle other than straight on, really, 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 really hard to see. You have to get down and put your face right in front of it and then you can see it. I just noticed I was hearing a fan. That's because I left this thing on with the AC turned on. Sorry about that if you're picking up that fan on my microphone. So let's just talk about conclusion. You've heard me say it a few times. I love this product. Love it. It's my favorite small solar generator. It even beats out the Blue Eddy EB3A, which I've had for longer. Just the input output on the screen simultaneously, the extra USB-C, the ergonomics of it, it's very similar to the EB3A. The charging on top, there's not much to complain about. Like I said, the nitpicky thing was better screen and get rid of the plastic flappy door. Actually, as for screens, I know there's already a product on the market that has e-ink as its screen. If you've ever owned a Kindle where you're on a outdoors and you wanna read your Kindle, you can still see it perfectly. That's what you need to put here is an e-ink screen so that you doesn't need to be touch screen because again touch screen has that possibility that what happens is the touch screen stops working and you don't have any buttons then the only way to change anything on here is to uh is to go in an app if you have buttons physical buttons that just feels a little bit safer that that's going to last forever as opposed to a touch screen we all know how touch screens are they work until they all of a sudden don't work for some weird reason so would i buy this solar generator yes yes i would and i i Again, I have been critical in the past of some solar generators where I'm like, eh, mm, 
it serves a purpose. Is it the best on the market? Is it the best bang for the buck? Is it this, is it that? Um, and I have to go, nope, sorry, sorry, <laughs> manufacturer that sent me this to test. I'm not gonna give it a ringing endorsement. This one, I'm gonna give a ringing endorsement. Uh, again, if this is something that interests you, I will put a code in the description, supposedly from what they tell me, it'll get you more discount at the checkout. So if you do that, even though there is a sale on right now, so go for the sale and then put the code in on top of it and see what happens. So that's it. So that's all about the R600. Let's push that aside for a second. And I'll just show you quickly the two or three actually solar generators or solar solar panels, sorry. So again, the 100 watt panel and the 200 watt panel look identical other than the 200 watt panel is double the thickness because it's got four panels instead of two. I used both of these extensively on my boat, loved them loved them i would have loved to have tried the 400 watt panel that's this one back here um it's gargantuanly big you will see a shot of it in my backyard so big that on a boat it just wouldn't work it would fall over if the boats hit waves it's just a beast too big for a boat would be perfect for an rver or somebody that's got some land beside where they're camping um yeah or at home like i do i leave my 400 watt. i have two of them actually i leave my four one my 400 watt panel in my backyard at all times. I have, as you can see, multiple solar generators. Uh, I have a glass panel system in my backyard for my Blue Eddy big one uh, that's always plugged in. But when I get one of these other ones and I wanna charge it and I don't wanna spend money by plugging it into wall power, I will take it in the backyard and plug it into my 400 watt uh, panel. Now I do stress this and I've stressed this in previous episodes. These folding panels, even though they are water resistant, water splash proof, rain proof, they are kind of a canvassy material and you probably don't want to leave it out 24 seven. Um, I put it out when I know we're going to have three, four, five days in a row of sun. But if I see any rain in the forecast, I fold it up and bring it into my shed out of the rain because I just know that rain over and over on these things and then them getting dried by the sun and then rained on again and dried by the sun, then I'm sure they will become brittle and start cracking. And uh, you know, since you're unfolding it and folding all the time, you don't want the seams to crack because that's where the wiring between one panel and another are probably housed. Now I'll use the 100 watt panel as my example. It's just lighter and easier for me to throw around on camera. It is, um, it is a little different in one term. The, the 200 watt has little clips to hold this shut. The 100 watt panel has Velcro to hold it shut because it is much easier to just, it's only two panels. Um, it's polycrystalline as, as opposed to monocrystalline. Um, poly has the upside of it's better in low light. It's better on cloudy days or if a partial shadow like a branch of a tree or something shades one part, it's more forgiving and it'll get you more power than a monocrystalline. For the argument on the other side, monocrystalline is usually the glass panel type. They're a little bit more efficient per square inch. So, but for a folding panel where you're gonna whip it out and chances are you're gonna leave it somewhere, if you're camping or whatever, and there's trees and there's other things that at some point when you're not paying attention, there might be some shade on your solar panel or on days where it's overcast, you're better to go with polycrystalline. It has a nice protected surface. Again, like it's rated for IP 60 something for rain resistance. Oh, and here's another feature I really, really like. I'll, I'll, I can sh uh, if you've watched my previous episodes, you've seen me review the Blue Eddy folding panels. And I'm like, why wouldn't they put some sort of grommets or some sort of connectors in the corner? Thinking as a boater or even an RVer if you leave it outside and it's windy. Um, if you stand this up on its legs, um, there's a good chance the wind's gonna blow it over and you don't want it to blow it over onto its face if you're on any sort of gravel or rock and scratch it up. Although it is supposed to be scratch resistant, I just don't wanna test that part. They have these little loops that you could take a bungee cord, tie it to a tree, tie another one to something else and have it held there so that if you walk away on a windy day, it's not gonna end up blowing over. On a boat, you don't want it to blow over the side of your boat into the water. So that's pretty much it. It's very efficient. It's very, in, very inexpensive. I think Canadian dollars, this thing is on sale right now for $199, which is crazy good. And as for, for efficiency, I actually, this is the first panel I've ever had where it clocked in above its stated 100 watts. I was, I was out there on a beautiful sunny blue day. I plugged in my solar generators. I did it with two different ones just to make sure I wasn't getting a weird reading from one. It showed me 105 watts. It's only rated for 100 watts. So I was like, that's weird. Okay, I'm not complaining. So I was very happy with this one. Also, this one's so light that when I stand it on my boat, let me turn it the right way here. When I stand it on my Dodger, which is my best spot for getting unobstructed sun, and I put the legs out, 
the weight of this on the legs is not pushing down on the roof of my Dodger so much that I'm worried about it stretching it or denting it because it is very light. But you can still put the legs up. With the bigger one, the 200 watt, there's just so much, it's, it's heavier, more legs. I only lay it flat with the 200 watt on top of my Dodger. With this one, I have, when the sun's low in the sky, um, stuck it up with its legs so it points a little more directly at the sun. This one is so small, you can stick it a lot of places on your boat. You can stick it on your boat and you think, well, this area of my boat's completely sunny. And then you go away, you come back, your boat swings on its anchor. And now, whoops, now the mass is shading where I put it. You can just literally pick it up, move it to a different part of your boat, and you're good to go. So a lot of good things about this product. Now let's get into the cons. Only two cons that I can think of. One is this leg. These legs are one size fits all. Let me just show you. There you go. That's it. That's the only angle you can be at. <laughs> so let me just show you. So this is about what? 45 degree angle maybe? It's about, about 45 degree angle. That's it, 45 degree angle. Now could you stand it a little higher if the sun's really low in the sky? A little bit by pushing this in just a little bit, a little bit more. Eh, you're adding a little bit more angle if you want it to higher. My thing is I want it lower. A lot of times you want your, your solar panel to be like this. In the middle of the summer, the sun's pretty high in the sky. This is too flat. This is too tall. And there should be something in the middle. And you, you might say, well, Craig, what would make it? It seems like a strap. What do you want them to do? This is kind of, they're kind of forced to keep it this way. Uh, no. So let me just show you a better technology. This is the Blue Eddy 200 watt. I just want to show you this, this snap system. So they have snaps with different Actually, they actually tell you the percentages. One, I get this one here is just for storage. It's like all the way close. Then you have, I don't know what that would be, 60%, 45%, 30%. So you could go really low like that at the lowest setting. Snap it to the next setting. You're still quite low. Snap it to the next setting. You're more at the stage of what the uh, All Powers is at. So you see what I mean? There are some options here. I've also seen ones where it comes through here and there's like a, a little pull and, and lock system where don't, you don't have snaps, you just have your own manual way of deciding what angle you want it on. Um, that just makes the most sense. And it's really not that hard for all powers to implement. Just put some snaps with a, with a strap that goes through. In other words, steal the idea from Blue Eddy. And the last thing, and I have mentioned this when I did the review, again, if you want the full review of the 400 watt, I've done a review of it already. That's sort of why I'm glossing over the 400 watt. And also it's too big for a boater. Uh, it's only good for people who have land. This is my other big thing about all powers. And I've mentioned it before. This MC4 connector, which I'm glad they have an MC4 connector because some of the smaller solar generator panels I have, like this AIM Tom, they don't even have MC4 connector cable. They just have like a five millimeter barrel port. They have like a little power box here with a, a port that you gotta plug in your own five millimeter plug into and then go. But that's not how solar generators work. They always wanna see this. This is an MC4 connector. You got a, a male and a female. My concern is this is way too short. So this pretty much says, unless you get an extension cable for your solar generator, you got to have your solar generator almost right beside or behind the shade of your solar panel. You can't say, oh, my tent is 15 feet away and I want to have my solar panel in the sun, but my tent where my solar generator is going to be is over there, 10 or 15 feet. This isn't going to do it. Um, you're going to have to buy yourself an extension, MC4 extension cable, which is easy to buy on Amazon. It's just you don't necessarily need to buy it if your solar generator or if your solar panel comes with a longer cable. Again, you might be saying, Craig, are, are you asking too much? Is that something that's not expected in the industry? Check out the cable in the Blue Eddy. <laughs> significantly longer and significantly thicker too. Um, so just a much higher uh, quality and longer length MC4 connector on the Blue Eddy panel than the all powers. Now granted this Blue Eddy panel is pretty expensive for the amount of watts you're getting so you get what you pay for. All powers is probably trying to keep the price down. They figure hey if you want to be 20 feet away from your solar panel go buy an extension cable. So there you go. Mostly all pros just a couple of cons. So again the pros efficient, light, well built that I can see grommets on the side to hold it in case of wind or not wanting to fall overboard. 
negatives, one size fits all leg, and an MC4 wire that's just way too short. So there you go. So that's it. That pretty much covers all their solar panels and their newest R600 small solar generator. All powers of your listening, the R2500 would make this obsolete for me <laughs> because if it has the same ergonomics and user friendliness of the R600, I should probably bring it back in the camera. If it has this ergonomics and user friendliness and, and, and quietness and everything that I wasn't in love with with this, if this can, comes in something that's this size or maybe slightly bigger, I would absolutely love it. So yeah, send me one for review. And that's pretty much all I can say. If you've enjoyed this, do, do me a favor by giving a thumbs up. It also does you a favor because if more people see the channel, more of these reviews will go out to other manufacturers and then more solar generator companies and solar panel companies will send me products to review, which then I will give to you and you will get even more information. So hopefully you see the value in that. That's about it. This is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.